Good morning, Calvary. I'm Pastor Sean, and I have the honor of bringing you today's word for the day. We're still going through the Proverbs and gleaning the wisdom found in this amazing book, and today we'll be in Proverbs 14, 17. Today's Proverbs is one that hits pretty close to home, and I'll explain why after we read it. Proverbs 14, 17 says this, A quick-tempered person does foolish things, and the one who devises evil schemes is hated. Now, whether I seem like it or not, my whole life I have dealt with anger. No matter what sins I deal with, anger is always the most present and seems to be the one I'm constantly having to keep in check. The closer I become to Christ, however, the more I feel like my anger is being extinguished and replaced by things like grace and kindness and love. So I would say, like a recovering addict, I am a recovering angry person. I haven't perfected not being an angry person, but with the Lord's help, I have made it a long way from my angry teenage or adult years. And if you deal with anger like I deal with anger, you probably know exactly what Proverbs 14, 17 is teaching here. An angry person who has a bad temper does stupid things. When we give in to our emotions, especially anger, it's like we put blinders on and we can't make those rational decisions or even have rational conversations. I've learned that anger has this amazing potential to destroy whatever it touches. I've lost friends because of my anger. I've strained relationships with family members because of it. I've blown up on my bosses because of it, and that's messy, all because of my anger. I've also learned this, that an angry person will try and justify all of their actions. When you're living in anger, you're not thinking straight. So what happens is you become the vengeful judge of the world around you. You drive around honking at everyone, being hypercritical of your spouse or your children, not allowing people to speak into your life, talking behind people's backs, etc., etc. Look, anger shows up in many different ways, and we try to justify it through even more wrong ways of thinking. Like this, they needed my advice, no matter how harshly you may have treated them. They needed to get out of your way, no matter how badly you may have hurt them in the process. Or or who are they to try and tell me what to do, no matter how badly you needed their advice or help? Coming from a life of anger, I can tell you that it seems bleak sometimes. It seems like there is no hope in changing who you are. You are prone to snap at people or judge people or be that abrasive person for the rest of your life. But I'm here to tell you that there is hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Because if he tells us that anger is something we need to get out of our lives, If he tells us through the Apostle James that human anger does not produce godly righteousness, then guess what? Jesus has already made a way out of your anger. And just like any other sin in your life, give it to Jesus. Just give it to him. Are you in God's word every day? Look, angry people, we're missing something in our lives, and we're trying to fill that void in our life with our emotion and outbursts and control even. But what we're missing is God's peace self-control, and conviction. Hiding God's word in your heart helps us in times when anger would otherwise take over. So we need God's word to learn what God's peace and self-control and conviction actually looks like. Clearly angry people are missing that peace in their lives. I think that's the most obvious lack. And Jesus tells us that peace comes from him and following him. So if we hide his word in our heart, his peace seeps out in ways that are hard to understand at times. We're also missing conviction. Now hear me out. I don't believe that every angry person is so shallow that they think they're right about everything. In fact, I bet most of the time you feel pretty convicted about the times you do blow up or judge the loved ones around you or do anything out of anger. But the problem isn't conviction after the fact. It's conviction before the act of anger actually happens. That's our issue. And that's where the spirit and self-control actually comes in. Here's my advice to you. Be in the word because we need its life-giving and peace-giving energy to run through our minds at all times of the day. Get prayed up, and I mean before every single day. Ask God to help guide you through the day to avoid certain situations and to lean on Him in the situations that are unavoidable. You can even ask a trusted friend to pray for you throughout the day, someone you trust to talk about times you fail and times you win when it comes to your anger. And number three, but ultimately, Self-control comes from giving the spirit room to work in your life. And this might be the best advice I can give you. Allow there to be margin. And here's what I mean. A hot-tempered person acts as quick as a flash fire. You get angry, you snap, and then it's over. We purposely, throughout the day, need to add margin between the moment we get angry and the point at which we respond. 
It allows the Spirit to intervene and work on our behalf. So that is the best thing I can say. Don't respond until you pray. And I don't mean get on your knees and start wailing and praying in that moment. I mean, you can. You'll probably get out of the situation all the same. But pray a short prayer in your head. God, guide me. Because if I do what I want to do in this moment, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to blow up. I'm going to hurt this person. But Lord, I know from your conviction and the Holy Word that my anger will produce no good fruit. So God, help me to respond with peace and love and truth. Anger is a big topic, so there's no way I can cover it all today. But I do hope that this will be a starting point to your recovery from anger. Be blessed, Calvary. Have a good day.